What's up, everyone? Uh, we are going to go through our sample A test key right now so you guys can kind of figure out how to do this lab and what you need to be reporting on your lab document. So this is our lab right here on the screen. Um, you just have to find it from your Explore Learning tab. We're going to grab sample A, throw it into our holder over here, and then there's four tests we're doing. So we have carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. All of these coordinate to your lab document. So you can have your lab document open and you can figure out um, which one is which, okay? So Benedict, they, go in, they go in order, you guys. So the Benedict test is first, Lugol, Burette, Sudan, Red. On your lab sheet, you're just writing for the results if it's a positive or if it's a negative, okay? So let's go ahead and start. So we're gonna start with the Benedict test. All you have to do is click test, super basic. It grabs a sample of your food sample, and then it grabs the amount of your lab supplies, which these are chemical indicators. So when we add chemical indicators to foods, what they do is change colors. And when they change colors, that's how we know that that food is present. So the Benedict test um, tests for simple sugars, okay, which are carbohydrates, are simple or monosaccharides. Um, we can see that on our test key right here. So this you can find in the Dropbox for your lab. But the test key, it tells you right here, for a positive result on the Benedict test, it turns to orange in the presence of monosaccharides. So in your lab sheet for this first food sample, A, you would write a plus sign, okay? Then we would go into our next test. I'm gonna just do the next three tests in a row and then we'll fill it out on our lab document also. Okay, so we've got our lab document open right here. So we know the Benedict test, it turned orange, so you just put a plus sign in there. Whoopsies, a plus sign in there, okay? The next thing we do is all three of the rest of the tests. So I was just working on those tests right now. Um, we did the Lugol test, it turned brown. We'll do the Burette test. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. And we'll do the lipids test, which is the Sudan red test. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Those are my sound effects. Okay, so we can note the colors, brown, blue, pink. And if we go to our test key, which we need to have open, you should have it open. Um, for the Lugol test, if it was if if this sample contained carbohydrates that were complex, so polysaccharides, it would turn dark purple. Ours turned brown. So on your lab document, you're gonna put negative because it did not turn purple. The Burette test, it turns purple when proteins are present. Again, we look at our results, did not turn purple, it stayed blue. So on your lab document, you'd write a negative sign. Sudan red test will have concentrated spots of color in the test tube. We can go back to our lab. There's no concentrated spots, it's all the same color. So that one would also be negative, okay? So these are your test results. Once you have your results, then you just need to identify what is present. If you have a positive, then your answer over here is going to be yes. If you have a negative, your answer on this side will be no. Okay, so no, no, and no, because we have three negatives for this. Now, the next part is asking you, what actually contains simple sugars? Um, if you were in Class Connect when we did this lab, we gave you some options, but simple sugars, you guys, are going to be the ones that are easy to digest. So the most simple sugar you can probably think of would have to be like fruits. So I'm going to give you an example. It would be apple juice. Apple juice has very simple sugars, and it's going to um, have everything that we need, okay? For this, it does not contain um, complex carbs. It doesn't contain proteins or lipids. So apple juice is just simple sugars, okay? You do the same thing for the rest of your samples. And then at the bottom, notice there's some empty columns, and you just fill those in. That's in the directions right here. Pick three more samples on your own to test, okay? So you're going to do this process um, a couple of times over and over again. If you don't know an example of a food sample, just look it up, you guys, on Google. It shouldn't be that hard, okay? All right. Good luck. If you have questions, make sure you are letting us know.